Hertz was one of the biggest customers for GM, Chrysler, and Ford. But now that Hertz has declared bankruptcy, you want to know how this is going to affect the auto industry. What's up everybody, I am Jasprit Singh and welcome to the Minority Mindset. After more than a hundred years in the industry, Hertz, the car rental company, declared bankruptcy on May 22nd, 2020. Hertz was one of the biggest buyers for GM, Chrysler, and Ford cars. What's up Detroit? And Hertz, the company, isn't just Hertz car rental. They also own Dollar Car Rental, Thrifty Car Rental, Donlin Car Rental, and Firefly Car Rental. While this pandemic was the final push that forced Hertz into bankruptcy, it wasn't the sole reason that Hertz went into bankruptcy. Hertz, like many of the companies that recently filed bankruptcy, had been struggling for years. Like Hertz hadn't made a dollar in profit for the last four years. Then came this pandemic and people stopped traveling, so people stopped renting cars, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back and Hertz was pushed into bankruptcy. Now, you should understand that Hertz is not completely going out of business. They filed for what's called a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which means they get to try to restructure their business. This way they can try to come back alive stronger. So Hertz will still be running, but they're gonna be working to restructure their business model. When Hertz filed for bankruptcy, they had $19 billion worth of debt that they couldn't afford to make the payments on anymore. And they had 700,000 cars sitting on their lots vacant because nobody was traveling and renting a car. Uh, anybody wanna rent my car? Please? Hertz was already in a slump because they couldn't compete against ride-sharing apps like Uber and Lyft. If you were traveling and you didn't want to deal with the hassle of renting a car or you didn't have a whole bunch of commuting to do, all you had to do then was go on your phone, download Uber, and now you'd have somebody drive you wherever you wanted to go. It is the worst feeling to take a long plane ride and then you finally land and then you walk on over to the car rental place or you might have to take a shuttle there and now it's one in the morning and now you have to stand in line for 45 minutes to get the keys to get your rental car because there's only one person working at the counter. It is so much more convenient to come off the plane, hit a couple buttons on your phone, and then have an Uber or Lyft waiting for you at the curb of the airport. This is what innovation is all about. Uber and Lyft revolutionized short-term travel for people and they made traveling more convenient for people. And if you want to make it more convenient to watch our YouTube videos, you should hit that thumbs up button below because if you don't, then uh, YouTube doesn't share our video with anybody else. So Hertz was kind of blindsided by this innovation and they couldn't keep up with it, but at the same time, they were also not financially prepared. Hertz had high expenses, they had a huge amount of debt, and then they got desperate and they kept changing the brand's vision and their CEO, hoping that they'd be able to suddenly just change their whole business. They changed their CEO four times over the last six years alone, and then in 2019, after the company lost 58 million dollars, they gave their CEO a multi-million dollar salary, and then they gave their CEO a one and a half million dollar bonus for losing tens of millions of dollars. Great job there CEO, you lost our company millions and millions of dollars. How about a million dollar bonus? So Hertz had growing competition, they couldn't keep up with the innovation, and they were, uh, let's just say, bad with their money. And then came this pandemic, which was that final straw. Now, people stopped traveling and renting cars, so Hertz was put on standstill, and they needed to take drastic measures. So they started by firing 16,000 employees, and then they sold a bunch of cars to raise some money, but uh, it wasn't enough. The problem was their expenses were too high and they had way too much debt. So then they declared chapter 11 bankruptcy as a way to try to restructure their business and change their business plan and try to live another day. While it's unclear if Hertz will continue to operate five or 10 years in the future, what is clear is that this rental car slowdown is going to hurt other industries and businesses. The five people who are gonna be most affected by this Hertz bankruptcy and slowdown, besides the employees that work at Hertz, are the car makers, the car suppliers, the used car market, 
investors, and banks. I'm about to talk about all five of these things starting with the car companies, but if you are interested in staying up to date on the top finance and business news when it happens, well that's why we created our free finance and business newsletter where our team first breaks down the top finance and business news and then we show you how this news affects your wallet that way you can be smart with your money. This newsletter is completely free and you can subscribe to our free finance and business newsletter by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description below. By the way, our financial news emails are different from our financial education emails. The way the Hertz business model works on a kind of broad level is they buy or lease cars from the big car makers, so Ford, GM, Chrysler, and then they rent you these cars at a higher price, and then they're going to try to sell you insurance that you usually don't need, and then they're going to try to charge you $10 a gallon for gas. What you want to understand is that 10% of all new car sales in the United States come from car rental companies, and Hertz was the second largest car rental company in America in 2019. So Hertz was buying and leasing something like half a million new cars a year. And most of those cars came from GM, Ford, and Chrysler. Like 21% of Hertz's fleet was from GM, 18% was from Chrysler, and 12% was from Ford. But now, because of this bankruptcy, Hertz has announced that they're going to be reducing their car buying by 80%. So that's hundreds of thousands of cars that GM, Chrysler, and Ford won't be selling. I should also mention that it's not just Hertz that's hurting. It's the entire car rental business because no one is traveling and renting cars. And even Avis, who is not bankrupt, has come out and said that they're cutting their new car buying by 80%. This is not good news for the car companies because they have already been struggling with slowing sales. And now because of this pandemic, dealerships are around the country are going to have to limit capacity into their dealership. And now on top of that, there's this car rental problem where car rental companies are no longer buying cars either. This signals that we might be seeing slowing sales for the car manufacturing companies through at least the next year, but like I talked about in previous videos, no industry or company works in a bubble. The car business is a massive industry with lots of different businesses that rely on one another in this food chain. And at the top of the food chain, you have the car manufacturers, the big car companies, Ford, GM, Chrysler. But they get their products from car suppliers who are selling finished products to Ford, GM, Chrysler and the suppliers are getting their parts from part manufacturers, and these part companies are getting their products from raw materials people. So if your big car makers for GM Chrysler are selling less cars, and then they start making less cars, that's gonna hurt your tier one suppliers. These are your suppliers that sell products to Ford GM Chrysler. And then that's gonna hurt the companies down the line as well. Okay, so if people aren't buying new cars, at least they'll be buying used cars, right? Yeah, except uh, the used car market isn't doing so hot either. If you go back to any one of my investing videos, I talk about supply and demand. If you have a huge supply of something and not many buyers, so low demand, then the price of this thing is gonna come down. But if you have a low supply of something and a lot of buyers or a lot of demand, now the price of this thing, this asset is gonna come up. This pandemic made people not wanna buy a car. And so we had very low buyers, so not much demand, but at the same time, car lots were still full of cars. So we still had a high amount of supply. And then the owners of these car lots were still sitting on all their regular expenses and they had debt payments to make on all their cars. So they needed to start cutting the prices of their used cars to make up for this shrinking demand. Cutting prices was their way to incentivize people to buy a car. That's why we saw used car prices drop at record speeds in April. And now Hertz going bankrupt is probably going to hurt used car prices even more by making used car prices come down because Hertz needs to raise cash and they're going to unload a lot of their cars, a lot of their inventory into the used car market. That means you're going to have an even bigger supply of cars for sale and in order to incentivize the buyer to buy, people are probably going to have to cut their prices. In March, Hertz sold like 54,000 of their cars as a way to raise some quick cash but it looks like that was just the beginning. Hertz and a lot of similar car rental companies have said publicly that they're gonna be selling tens of thousands of their cars on the used car market as a way to raise cash. So we have the demand to buy a car still kind of low, but at the same time, the supply of cars for sale is like going through the roof and this probably means that we're gonna see the price of used cars come down more. So if you're in the car market, uh, he might be able to scoop up some sweet deals. This is also more bad news for the car makers because if there are more used cars out there, then people are going to be more incentivized to want to buy a used car instead of a new car, which means less sales for, you know, Ford, GM, Chrysler. 
but you can also just buy your used car directly off of the Hertz website so you don't even have to go through these car makers to buy a used car. But we can't forget about how this bankruptcy is going to hurt the day traders who were speculating and hoping that they could buy the Hertz stock for cheap and get rich. Forbes did a little study and they found that on Robinhood alone, there were something like 45,000 traders who were either buying up the Hertz stock or owning and holding this Hertz stock thinking that they'd be able to buy the stock for cheap, hoping that it wouldn't go bankrupt. Well, that big potential payday also came with a lot of risk, and now a lot of these speculators are holding a stock that is now essentially worthless. I'll be talking more about what happens to a stock when a company goes bankrupt in a future video, so if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And this leaves us with the banks. The poor, poor banks. Remember what I said in the beginning of this video. Hertz filed a chapter 11 bankruptcy, which means they get to stay in business and continue operating their business, but they have to try to restructure their business, which means they're gonna have to come up with a plan with their lenders to come up with some solution here because Hertz can't keep paying all this debt money. Here's the problem that Hertz is having financially. In 2019, Hertz had a revenue of $9.8 billion. And after paying for all their expenses in 2019, they were left with a $58 million loss. Now, to make up for this loss, Hertz had to go out and borrow more money. And in March of 2020, Hertz was sending on something like $19 billion worth of debt. So that's almost two times their total revenue in 2019. During this bankruptcy phase, Hertz is going to try to come out alive. But in order to do that, they're going to have to come up with a deal with their lenders. Essentially, Hertz is probably going to have a negotiation with their banks and lenders where they say something like, okay, banks, look, we owe you $19 billion, but there's no way we can pay you this money. And if you tell us that we have to pay you $19 billion, then we're just going to shut our business down and you're going to get nothing. But if you work with us and you give us a break, then we will be able to stay in business and we will at least be able to pay you something. And maybe if we come back to life, we'll be able to give you more money. That's why Hertz is trying to liquidate so much of their car inventory because they want to raise as much cash as possible to have money to operate their business and show their lenders that they're serious about making a deal and coming back to life. But this comes at a price for the lenders because that means the lenders and the banks are going to have to take at least a short-term loss with Hertz to try to keep them in business. Maybe if things work out, then Hertz will come out profitable and they'll be able to pay the banks back. But there's also a chance that this bankruptcy restructuring won't work and the banks and lenders are going to lose out on many billions and billions of dollars. So if you are investing your money, which is something I think everybody should be doing, just make sure you understand the risk because some investments have a lot more risk than others, especially if you're looking to invest in distressed companies. So make sure you do your research and keep an eye on what's happening in the finance and business news. And remember, if you're looking for an easy way to do that, we have our free newsletter in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with one friend. That way we can help spread the word. If you want to learn more about the auto crisis that's happening, especially in the auto loan industry, we already made a video on it. And you can watch this video by clicking this button right over here. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.